Welcome to Tri Church Worship, a worship collaboration between St. Paul, St. John, and Emmanuel. We're glad you are here with us to explore our sacred story and to worship God as a community. In our life together, we have a few things coming up for our Tri Church worship. On December 24th, and 25th, we will have one worship service that runs that whole weekend so that you can experience a, the, a Christmas worship, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day all together. Um, we also have a few changes coming in how we will be worshiping together online and over the phone. Um, we have a special announcement about that for you now. Although Tri Church phone in and online worship as we know it is ending. There will be additional opportunities to worship God online and over the phone in 2023. Within the coming weeks, there will be more information available through each congregation's newsletter and bulletins about how these new opportunities for worship will happen and how you can access them for 2023. We are so grateful for our partnership in the gospel. May God's word guide you this day and always. As we wait for Christ to come, God, God is, is with us. us. As we wait with all creation, God, God is, is with us. us. As we wait for the world to change, God, God is with us. us. Today, as we wait, we will light the filled candle to encourage us that we, we have, have joy. joy. With Mary and Joseph, we, we have, have joy. joy. With the choirs of angels, we, we have, have joy. With, with baby Jesus, we, we have, have joy. joy. Oh, let us pray, O oh God, for whom we long. We, we praise you for sitting with us, us while we wait. You hold us in times of joy and times of sorrow. Awaken us to your wonder and lead us to spread joy to the world. In the name of Jesus, amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, as we wait for your coming ever deeper in our lives, we know you are here. Open us to your presence, love, grace, and peace. We come to worship you. Amen. A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be the son, called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to the, a Judean 
town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The, it's wonderful because there'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow. For us Christians, it's the most wonderful time of year for the tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. It's wonderful, it's marvelous to celebrate the story of the first Christmas. In this story, God came to earth as a little, little bitty baby, making love incarnate, which means embodied or in flesh, in our human fragile flesh. God came to earth so that all of creation could more deeply connect with this divine love and the divine could more deeply connect with us. God could have appeared on earth in any way that God wanted. God could have come to earth in a flash of lightning or shown up as a full-grown adult. And in our gospel narratives, we do have different stories that depict how God came to earth in different ways. But here in Luke's story, and as it's accompanied by the Gospel of John, God chose to be born as a vulnerable and dependent infant. He could have been born a king to a royal family with gorgeous palaces and strong armies. But instead, a young peasant girl named Mary carried God for nine months and gave birth to God in Jesus. It is a story that is full of wonder, full of mystery, and full of joy. It is wonderful. Our gospel text for today uh, is also wonderful. It's filled with wonder. Mary and her cousin Elizabeth are full of wonder. They are curious how these miraculous things that they are experiencing could have happened to them and what it all means. First, Mary has a wonderfully shocking visit from an angel. Mary lived in a small village called Nazareth in the northern region of Galilee. It was a humble village and it relied on agriculture and fishing. But the angel suddenly appeared and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary, of course, was startled and, uh, uh, and perplexed, and she wondered what kind of greeting this might be. 
I'm sure the angel saw the startled look on her face and continued with an encouraging word, saying, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is especially honoring you. You will give birth to a baby and name him Jesus. He will be a great ruler and his kingdom will have no end. Now, Mary is really wondering just how on earth this was going to happen. The angel's answer is a little ambiguous, but he reassures her that God will be with her in the power of the Holy Spirit and nothing is impossible for God. Without much hesitation, it seems, Mary answers, Here I am, a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary is basically like, bring it on. Often, we depict Mary as this weak, obedient girl who is the epitome of womanhood for her submissive nature. But instead, in this moment of acceptance, Mary is being incredibly brave and courageous. She's probably still wondering how this is all going to work out, but she accepts the challenge. And it is going to be a challenge. Giving birth to this divine baby is not going to be easy. Not only does she have to face the burden of pregnancy and labor and delivery, but she's going to have to face the consequences in her own community that are no fault of her own. She is just a poor teenager. And sure, she is engaged to Joseph, but no one would expect her to be pregnant just yet. She's going to have to face all kinds of stigma and stares and gossip. Through it all, Mary trusts that God will be with her. She bravely and proudly says, yes, yes, I will serve God. Let's do this. She probably feels the tiniest bit of apprehens uh, apprehension, but is yet excited, humbled yet honored, grateful yet terrified. Mary is filled with wonder at it all and wonder of all that God will do through her. In the mix of all this wonder and worry, Mary goes to the safety and companionship of her cousin Elizabeth. It turns out that Elizabeth is also filled with wonder at how God ha is working through her. Elizabeth is also expecting a, I experiencing a miraculous pregnancy. She was well beyond childbearing years and never had any children. Unfortunately, in the society of her day, women were considered productive members of society only if they were able to have legitimate sons with their husbands. Besides how ridiculous and unfair that is, we know that having children can be extremely complicated and it's hardly just a woman's fault. The sad truth is that one in four pregnancies end in a miscarriage. Many couples struggle to get pregnant, and I want to name that sometimes when we read these scriptures about God blessing people with a pregnancy, it can be easy to wonder, well, why hasn't God blessed me then? I don't know the answer to that question. All I know is that God is certainly not punishing you and God will be with you in the struggle. God watched over Mary and Elizabeth and saw them through their trials and their difficult lives. These stories are so wondrous, not because they had children, but because God loved these lowly women despite their status within their community or family. After Elizabeth and Mary greet each other, Mary sings about the wondrous things God will do through them. We say she sings it because the way it's set in the biblical text, it looks like a song. So Mary says, and she sings, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of the servant. 
Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God looks with favor on Mary, even in her loneliness, and God will do great things where we least expect. Mary sings as if to wonder, if God can do this through me, what else can God do for everyone poor like me? She continues to sing and says that God has shown strength with the arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thro thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and set the rich away empty. God is leveling out the playing field. The lowly are lifted up and the proud are humbled. The hungry are fed. Those who have enough are sent away, perhaps to share in their riches, to share their riches, I should say. By favoring those who have been cast aside, God is evening things out. God is shrinking the gap between the haves and the have-nots. It's not that God loves those who have good fortune any less. It's just that God is especially caring for those that the world does not. In her song, Mary casts a divine vision like a prophet. She dreams that the world will be a better place and God is making it happen. She actually sings as if it's already happened. Did you catch kind of the tense of the words? She doesn't say God will feed the hungry. She says God has filled the hungry. God has done wondrous things for Mary and God will continue to make things wonderful for those that the world forgets. What wondrous things is God doing for you? Maybe you've gotten a second chance. Maybe you've had a moment of peace lately in the busyness of the season. Maybe you are reminded of God's goodness in something simple, like the face of your loved one as they look up at the starry sky with wonder. Perhaps you've experienced grace or mercy. God's wonderful love and blessings are for us as individuals, but they also change our society. God's favor for Mary changed the trajectory of the whole world. Her song invites us to wonder how God is calling us to level the playing fields and to make our society wonderful for those who are cast aside. If you find yourself with extra resources, whether it be food, clothing, money, or time, how can you serve those that have less? How can our whole society even things out? How can we make it so that someone doesn't have to work three jobs and still maybe can't pay the bills? What if everyone could afford food and the farmers and the laborers that put their blood, sweat, and tears into it also were paid a decent living wage. Mary invites us to dream and wonder what it might be like for everyone to have all that they need. God joins us in this dream, just as God was with Mary and Elizabeth. God will continue to work wonders. May we be filled with wonder at all that God has done, is doing, and will do. After all, it's the most wonderful time of year. Amen. Angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name Shine.
shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you The signs of God's dominion were to be seen through the healing of the sick, the rising of the dead, and the preaching of the good news to the poor and the oppressed. Let us pray that our lives may be instruments of God's work in this world by saying, O God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation. Grant that we who bear your image may be faithful stewards of your gift and administer its bounty with wisdom for the good of all creatures. O God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you that you have called us to be your people. Give us patience as we await your coming and grant us wisdom to discern your will in our daily lives, that each of us may serve others for the building up of our common life. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you for the communities of faith throughout the world. Strengthen your church as it witnesses to your love. Guide us in the fulfillment of your mission, that all may be one. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you for the privilege of ministering to others. We remember before you all who are sick or in need. We pray for those who have died. Grant us the grace to accept suffering with patience and to be strengthened by our common life in the body of Christ. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We thank you for countless gifts. Above all, we thank you for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ and for our unity in him through our common baptism. O oh God, most worthy of praise, hear our prayer. We offer our thanksgiving and prayers to you, the one God and the source of light and life, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give praise and thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of a Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
hear this good word from God for you. May the God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God. Let the fires of your justice burn.